everybody. Um, got a nice review today. Due to the amazing generosity of several of my YouTube friends, I've got a few knives to choose from to review today. So using the um, traditional method of eeny meeny miny mo, catch a Clarkson by the toe, if he squeals give him three million quid to make another series of Top Gear, eeny meeny miny mo. And that has quite randomly selected, as the title suggests, the CRKT Edgy. Okay, so this is how the Edgy comes. Fairly standard CRKT box. And even though it is a completely standard CRKT box, I forgot how to open it. I cut it open, so I've had to tape it up. I am a stupid. So in the box we have the knife. And a leaflet. A 2012 mini catalogue. Showing various products for 2012. Some have uh, caught on better than others. The Ripple, for example, seems to have caught people's imagination. Um, the Santa Fonte Tribute, I won't mind picking one of them up. But then we've got things like the um, Spew, which seems to catch people's interest at first, but I don't think it's really got anywhere. But yeah, 2012 catalogue. Um, which brings me to the first point. This is the Edgy. There is also an Edgy 2, which has been brought out since, which looks like this. Now, here, if we open the knife, we can see that um, the two knives are quite different. And when I first opened this, I referred to it as a Warncliffe blade. And I had a, a PM, I had a little nudge, reminding me that there are people out there who would be more than happy to jump on the slightest little error anybody makes. And I do tend to use the terms Warncliffe and sheep's foot interchangeably. So I thought I'd do a bit of research and see if I could find out um, if there is a technical or authoritative definition of Warncliffe and Sheep's Foot. I couldn't find anything. If anybody does know where such information exists, I'd be quite happy um, if you could refer me to it. What I've come up with... Um, my own theory, which is up for discussion, rejection, whatever, is the difference seems to be down to the steepness of the curve. So for example, if you draw a tangent to the curve where it joins the blade, if that tangent is steeper than 45 degrees, as in this picture, People seem to call that sheep's foot. But if the angle of the tangent is less than 45 degrees, as in this picture, that seems to get called, ooh, that seems to get called a warm cliff. So, whether that's right or wrong, that's the basis I'm working on until proved otherwise. So let's have a, a run through some specs. Open, the knife is 7 inches, 178 millimetres, thereabouts. Closed, it's 4 and 1 8, 105 millimetres. It weighs 3.8 ounces, um, 108 grams. The blade is 2.5 millimetres thick, and it's 420J2, 
stainless steel. It's not a stainless steel I know a great deal about, although according to the uh, data sheet on CRKT's website, it's pretty much the same as 3CR13, which um, isn't really a particularly good steel. I'll just show you the comparison with the numbers. So, to give you a, a better idea of the size, as I say, it's seven inches open. This is a Victorinox Spartan copy. So as you can see, it is quite um, a chunky knife in comparison. The thing with the CRKT, edgy, is it is allegedly self-sharpening. Down in between the liners, there's a metal bar with a diamond coating. And it's reckoned that every time you close and open the knife, the blade rubs against that bar and the diamond coating keeps the edge sharp. Hence the name, edgy. To facilitate that, we have a bit of a weird blade grind. We've got half height hollow grind, nothing weird there, but then on one side we've got quite a large bevel, but not on the other side. When you look at the blade with the naked eye under the lamp, as we are here, it does look like the edge is a bit raggedy. But out of the box, that's not bad at all. You'd have to be a bit of a miserable bugger to complain about that. Bearing in mind that this knife is usually available for less than £15, you're getting quite... Um, a hefty blade. I don't think we could call it um, an everyday carry knife, I think it's intended as a work knife. Uh, it has that look about it, it has that substantial feel about it. Um, one problem I do have, it's a slip joint and I like slip joints. I don't think that in general use slip joints are necessarily any less safe than locking blades. I think where they become dangerous is when they're not used properly. Having said that, as a work knife, um, you are more likely to be using it harder than an everyday pocket knife. Um, and you're more likely to be using it for not just simple clean slicing you might be digging about at things you might be hacking through stuff and because it's a slip joint and because of the way the blade and the handle are designed there is a possibility that the blade can close on your hand I'll see we'll get that up to the camera you can see we can bring that into focus with a bit of luck um, you could end up cutting yourself. If we compare that to another slip joint, um, also by CRKT, the Longmar number 5, the difference here is that the, hand, the front of the handle and the start of the blade form a large single choil. So with your finger in there, you just simply cannot close it on your hand. I mean you may bruise your finger but the blade is not going to get anywhere near your finger. So that is a little bit of a design flaw I think for a work knife. We've got the large pseudo spidey hole but I find it difficult to open uh, one-handed and I think most people will mainly because when the blade shuts it does grip the sharpening bar inside. So you're not going to be flipping it open with any great um, flashiness. You can open it one-handed. 
it's just not the easiest. Big substantial pocket clip, one position only. Um, and that's pretty much it for this I think. What we do need to do though is try it with a little bit more work than simply slicing paper. So let's see how it stands up to a bit of cardboard. Right, so for cardboard we've got some double layer corrugated uh, shipping carton. Quite heavy. See how we get on. No problem there. Slices well from the hollow grind. Feels comfortable. A little bit of jimping on the plastic scales there. It's nice. Yeah, no problem with that. One big advantage is the pocket clip doesn't feel uncomfortable. That's something that's easy to get wrong, I think. I think that's a good knife. As long as it keeps its edge, the uh, blade steel is probably the lowest carbon content of the common stainless steels. So, edge retention isn't going to be good, which means we're relying on the sharpening bar to keep that edge for us. But I like that.